Hey, and welcome back to a new video. Today, I will talk about Webflow pricing. So you might be thinking you want to switch to Webflow or you are building your Webflow website and you are wondering what do all these different pricing plans mean and what are the differences in features. Then this video is exactly right for you because I will show you and explain you all the different plans. And I will also show you some real life examples of the websites that we are building as an agency. So if you need help with your Webflow website and setting it up and maintaining it, make sure to check out magia.com. But for now, let's jump into the video. So first thing that you need to understand, there are two logics in Webflow. First of all, sites and then workspaces. Um, but we are going to start with the workspaces here. So a workspace is basically your dashboard. You log into your workspace and in this workspace, there, ca there can be multiple sites. Whenever you are signing up for Webflow, um, you get the free starter works, uh, workspace plan assigned. So that's already very, very good. In this workspace, you can have unlimited paid hosted sites. That means whenever later on in the process, you are adding a site plan to any of the projects and you are paying for it, you can have an unlimited amount of those in your workspace. If you are deciding not to have a paid plan, there is some sort of limitation, let's say, to the websites that you can have in your workspace. So you can have two staging sites. That means you can have, for example, two projects that you are working on that you are not paying for at the moment. And in these two projects, you um, can have a maximum of two pages. So really, if you want to try something out, it's fine. But if you are building a, an actual website, this won't be sufficient at all. And also it is limited to 50 CMS items. What a CMS item is, we will talk about this a little bit later because it's very relevant on the site plans. Also in this free startup plan, there's one seat included. A seat is basically my account here um, so that I can log in and you can invite two guests or two agency accounts. So basically, if you are working together with a freelancer or agency, you can invite them also to your startup plan. Now, let's think we want to grow our team and there are a, a ton of different websites that we want to build. Then you need to upgrade to the core or growth plan. For the core plan here, you can have 10 staging sites. So basically 10 projects that you are working on that are still hosted on the webflow.io domain. So for example, max.webflow.io. It's something that is created for each new website um, or each new project in your workspace. You have a maximum of 300 pages per stage site, 50 uh, CMS items, and you can also add stuff like custom code. Um, and you have some additional features like code export. With the growth plan, there is some other stuff that um, was added to towards the workspace. It's specifically about roles. So multiple people that you can invite to work on your projects. And you also have already some features enabled like redirects or password protection for these th sites. In general, I would say these workspace plans are not so relevant if you are starting out with Webflow because most of the time you will have a project that is live on a custom domain anyways. A custom domain would be something like for us, magia.com, so our company domain. And then we have a site plan for this website so we can still be on the startup plan. The core and growth plans are specifically relevant for larger teams and it's specifically relevant also for agencies, for example, or freelancers that want to build a ton of different sites without actually launching them yet or without actually paying for them at this point in time. Um, and also just a final note about the workspace plans. There is this like Teams features and then there is also a specific plan or are specific plans for freelancers and, and agencies. Um, basically, there are different tiers dependent on the roles and if you need stuff like client features uh, or client payments in here and you can yeah simply add more people to your agency, but this is not what we are focusing on right now because as an agency or freelancer, you probably are very familiar with the Webflow pricing. So let's move over to the second and most important part. It's sites. So the site plans are super, super relevant. This is what really matters. And there are two big areas. So the first area are the general ones. So uh, basically 90% of the sites that are running on Webflow. And then we have the e-commerce plans. So just as a side note for the e-commerce plans, Webflow has an e-commerce functionality. So you can actually sell products through Webflow. 
Um, here you have three different plans. First of all, standard, you can have 500 um, e-commerce items. There is a 2% transaction fee. If you choose the bigger plan, you have a 0% transaction fee. And then in the advanced plan, you can also have more items uh, if you have a lot of inventory, for example. Also important to know, whenever you are going for an e-commerce plan, there are also some of the general plans here included. So if you're going for the standard plan on e-commerce, that means um, that the CMS plan here is already included in that one. And now the grand finale. So let's talk about the side plans in general. When you are starting out with Webflow, your project has a free plan. What does that mean? You can publish your project to a webflow.io domain. So for example, if I'm creating a new project here and this is my, my, my private website, um, right now it's running on maxflight.com because I have a paid plan chosen. But if I'm not doing that uh, from the beginning, there is automatically a domain assigned to me from Webflow. So let me show it to you. Uh, if I publish my websites now to this webflow.io domain, people can access it. And this is what the URL here looks like. Um, and obviously it's okay if you just want to show something around, but if you are a business yourself or want to be more professional, you want to have your own domain. And to do that, you need to add a paid site plan. But for now, staging domain is something that everyone gets on Webflow. And once you later on move to a custom domain, this webflow.io domain can be used as your staging. A staging basically is a preview of your website that isn't indexed with Google. So you can take it to try out some stuff um, to see how, how the features and the things that you build are working without actually pushing it to the live version of your website. Also on the startup plan, you have two pages in your project. So two pages, what does that actually mean? In our Webflow project here, um, I have, for example, my main page here. And then on my website, I have also a page that is um, a contact page. And this would be counted as a separate page. And you can see these pages here in the left menu in the designer. So one, two, three, four pages that I have in here. And this amount of pages is limited by your Webflow plan. So if you need more pages, you need to upgrade your plan to the basic or CMS or business plan. So dependent on how many pages you have, you need to choose a paid plan. So what is CMS collections? So CMS collections is something that is super, super nice in Webflow. So let's imagine we have a blog on our website or on my, on my website here, I have for example, a library of articles and media publications that I was doing. And I set up the Webflow CMS and the feature here can be accessed through the CMS button to have a functionality where I can easily add new items to this collection. So in my case here, I have called it blog post and I can simply add content to this um, CMS collection. This can also be something like testimonials. It can be team members or everything dynamically that needs to be filled over time, but where the layout, for example, is staying the same. And in the free plan, you have 20 CMS collections. So a CMS collection here would be this. So I have two authors and blog posts, and then a limited amount of items, 50 items in this case. So this would be these 50 different block items that I have. This is something that is super important when you want to grow your website. And last but not least, let's talk about hosting. So there are 50 form submits. So let's imagine we have a form on our website where someone uh, like a contact form, let's say, then um, there are 50 free. So 50 people can submit your form and you can always access these form submissions here on, on Webflow itself in the forms section. Um, and when you want to grow that one, then you need a paid plan here and you have one gigabyte of bandwidth. So bandwidth is basically your website. Once someone accesses it, it will automatically be, be downloaded to the, or like downloaded from the server. And this takes some bandwidth. And now Webflow is limiting huge sites. So I can always go to site usage here in my dashboard. And I can see, for example, for the current months, 190 MB. 
uh, download and I can also see what was driving this amount of bandwidth. In my case, a custom font and some images. So this is also something that you can use to uh, adjust if your bandwidth is too high. And I have one gigabit, uh, gigabyte free here. So that's yeah, quite, quite solid, let's say. Realistically speaking, if you have a proper project, if you want to, uh, for example, have your business website on Webflow, the free plan is not sufficient. So we need to go to the basic or CMS plan. The main differences between these two plans is the CMS functionality. If you only have static sites. So we remember a static site is everything that you can see here in Webflow. For example, about us, contact. Then... You can go with a basic plan starting at $14 per month uh, with yearly billing or monthly billing. It's $18 per month. If you want to have a CMS also included. So for example, you have blog posts or dynamic items, then you need to go for the CMS plan here. So biggest difference, no CMS here, CMS availability here. Both of them, however, have the custom domain functionality. What is the custom domain functionality? So if we are going here to uh, our dashboard and publishing, we can see that I have our own domain connected. So in my case, maxflight.com. And this domain makes it possible for anyone in the web to access my website in this domain and not on this Webflow URL that I showed you earlier. And to add this domain, I need to have this paid plan so either a basic or cms one um and yeah doesn't matter no difference in them uh, in terms of the um connecting of the domain itself about the hosting it's yes quite similar let's say because we have unlimited form submits so there can be unlimited people uh using your contact form for example and here we have 10 gigabit in bandwidth and here 50 um so nothing nothing too crazy here and last but not least, then we have the legacy editor users. So I think this is a feature as they are written that's only available till the end of 2025. Um, an editor that we will have here is a user that we can invite to our project that doesn't have specifically an access to our designer. So the designer and Webflow is everything that you can see here. In here, I can change the layout of the website. And oftentimes, for example, if someone in, is working in marketing and they should just have access to adding content in your blog, they don't need access to the designer itself. So then I can go in to my dashboard here and for site access, I can invite more people into, the, um, into my project here as an editor. And uh, an editor can access the CMS alone. So they can log into this CMS here and add items without having the access to the designer itself. Um, yeah, and then last but not least, if we are moving over to the business plan, there are two big differences. So first of all, form file upload. What does it mean? There, if I'm building a form on my website, Right now, it just has input fields. So for example, email address, description, and then a submit button. If I also want the people to upload files, so for example, a document, then I need to have the business plan here. And then besides that, what we also have here is just more pages, more CMS collections, and also more CMS items. And also for the number of CMS items, you can customize it here, as same as the bandwidth of your website. And then you can see the price changing here. When we are talking about the enterprise plan of Webflow, this is specifically important for big companies. There are a couple of huge differences to all the plans here. Mostly they are about um, access rights. So how do people work in your project? They are about enterprise security. So higher standards when it comes to security. You have an account manager and there are features, for example, like branching. So if your developers are working on a part of your website, they can do it in a like um, fixed setting, let's say, before these changes are merged into your main website again. Last but not least, after we have talked about site plans, workspace plans, we need to take a look at the op op optional add-ons. What we have here is optimize, uh, analyze and localization. So analyze basically is something that is quite new. It's giving you insights about your website. Um, so 
yeah, you can think of it almost like a Google Analytics, let's say. And the pricing for that one, if we scroll down here, um, is based on the number of sessions per month. And it's starting at $29 per month, goes up to 229 So you can check this one out. It's about insights about your website. Um, and then if we go back here, there's optimize. Optimize is specifically done for, for example, doing A-B testing or running experiments on your website. So checking out, okay, which kind of text would work best? Should I change the button color? Very relevant for larger companies with a lot of traffic. If you don't have enough traffic, optimize, you don't need to look at it. It's not relevant. And last but not least, localization. So this is super important if you have a multi-language website. So for example, our website at Magia, it's in German and English. So if you go to the main website here, you see it's in English, but there's a button toggle that is German and you can quickly change between these two um, yeah, to see the different content. And the price of localization is uh, somewhere down here, yes. Okay, so first of all, there's essential localization. It's $9 per month per local. A local is basically a uh, language and a region. So for example, if I'm just adding German and English, I have two locals uh, and we are just paying for the additional one. So $9 per month. Um, but for example, I could also have English and then German for Austria and German for Germany. So then it would be two additional locals. So we would have $18 per month. In this essential plan, you can have up to three locals. If you want more, you need the advanced one. Um, and you have the localization of your CMS items, your static pages, um, and you can use the machine power translation and you also have localized SEO, means meta tags, meta titles, and all of that stuff. The main difference to advanced is about localized URLs and automatic visitor routing. Localized URLs means, for example, if we are going to our um, yeah, services here, we in Germany have um, a service that is called Marken brand design so this is the german word and german url for this specific service if i'm going to the english website here you can see that it's brand identity design if you want to have these customized urls you need the advanced plan and automatic visitor routing last but not least means if someone from germany is coming to the website they will be automatically sent to the german version of the website if someone from spain is coming they will be sent to the spanish version and if you want that, choose the advanced plan. And also here, there are some enterprise features, for example, that you can hide certain elements on specific language pages. For example, in Spain, I don't want this section, then you can hide it. Okay, so this was a full walkthrough of the Webflow pricing. I hope you liked the video. If you have any specific questions, put them down in the comments below. And also, if you want to learn more about marketing, Webflow, design, make sure to follow the account. Last but not least, if you need help with your Webflow website, make sure to check out magia.com, uh, our services. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.